want of all legislative change and hopefully change for good. Honourable Trevor Mallard. Mr Speaker, it's pretty rare that I get up and say that I uh, agree totally with Chris Finlayson, uh, the attorney. Uh, but in this, but in, this, in this particular case, I think he summarised uh, this uh, or these issues uh, very well. I, I thank my colleague David Parker for further outlining it and say that even the comments of John Banks with, I think, a slight misunderstanding about how governments were formed in the 17th century, uh, other, than, other than that, uh, his comments also uh, made uh, a lot of sense and, and added some value to it. Uh, I think most members of Parliament will understand that I am very familiar uh, with the case uh, that, um, that has led to the change uh, which we are now discussing. I agree with uh, my uh, colleague David Parker that, uh, and, and the attorney, the attorney and David Parker I think were on common ground that the courts got it wrong. I think David Parker was saying they shouldn't have been there in the first place. Uh, and and, um, and I, I do uh, agree with that. It is fundamental to having proper ministerial accountability that ministers can be properly briefed by officials on particular issues. Um, sometimes, you know, there are questions about the adequacy of the answers that ministers give, and sometimes there are questions about the adequacy of the briefings that they receive. Uh, but to suggest that briefings cannot be full and frank because the officials might face defamation action uh, is something which I think uh, is particularly uh, unfair and doesn't help us here. Uh, Mr Speaker, what you do at the beginning of every parliament uh, is that you uh, wander off uh, to Government House uh, and you express your wishes for the House to be granted a number of things. But the most important of those is the freedom of speech. It is the ability to say what is important. And, Mr Speaker, sometimes members of Parliament will say what is important to them. They will give their views. And sometimes they will be wrong. And sometimes, in other circumstances, they will co commit defamation. But, Mr Speaker, it is my view that that right, the right to criticise without fear, is something which is very valuable and very important. And I think probably not often enough used in our, in our modern parliament. Uh, I think the, the way that we've gone, and the, certainly the time that uh, John Banks has been in parliament, even in the time that I've been here, we've tended to have more debates around big party political issues rather than the things which are important to individual constituencies uh, and, to, and to local members. Now, maybe that's, a, that's, a, that's a, one of the flow-ons from uh, MMP. But, um, Mr Speaker, I do every now and again get cases which I contemplate bringing up in the House, uh, people who I think are ripping off my constituents. The so most recent was being a man who sells uh, washing machines in Wainui Amata, uh, that, that just break down. He says that they are refurbished and they're not, they're stored outside, and for a period of time, Wins was referring people to him uh, with grants which they had to repay, often for long periods after their washing machines broke down. Now, Mr Speaker, it just seemed to me uh, we, we've sorted the problem out at the wind's end and I, I'm, the man will go out of business relatively soon because his main source of custom uh, has gone because the beneficiaries in Wanyuri Amata uh, now get good quality washing, new washing machines, not much more expensive and with guarantees, uh, and Mr Speaker, guarantees which are enforceable as opposed to the man in Wanyuri Amata uh, with whom uh, people who were basically chased away uh, when they came to ask for their, uh, for their guarantees to be enforced. So the, the, the point that I'm making, Mr Speaker, is that there are lots of cases that we get as local MPs where we should have the right to freely and openly criticise people uh, uh, without fear uh, of defamation uh, action. Some of those cases will be massive. 
Some of them will be relatively minor, and some, in the, like in the Lee case, fit somewhere in, in between that. Uh, Mr Speaker, I, uh, I have no doubt in that case there was a high degree of political motivation uh, in, in Ms Lee's uh, comments. I think she was attempting to get some sort of settlement um, from the Crown in a way which I thought was most uh, inappropriate. Um, the, the, I mean, notwithstanding everything that was said previously, there were the quality of her work was suspect uh, and questionable, and she was replaced. Uh, and I, in my view, is that that was an appropriate thing to do, uh, and to sue the person who gave the, or sue the attorney and the person uh, who gave the advice uh, was not appropriate. Uh, and and I think what we're doing now was is coming to the uh, coming to the right point, getting the law so that members do have free speech. Uh, it's your job, Mr Speaker, to ensure that it's used uh, responsibly. Uh, but in the end, we will face the electorate uh, and face adverse consequences from the electorate if we get it wrong. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Uh, David Clendon. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker.